Clancy Post to present tonight's exclusive, Does Anyone Else Remember Amber Snow? Written by author Jojo. Every year, as winter closes in and I watch the world around me being shrouded in white, I get a feeling of unease. For the longest time, I didn't know where the sensation was coming from. It was as if my subconscious was warning me. Like when someone you can't see is looking at you and you can feel their eyes. It felt like that. I would sit every year by the window watching the snow fall and try to recall some long forgotten memory. Snowflakes would cling together on the ground harmlessly resting above blades of grass. It was just snow. I knew rationally that I had nothing to be afraid of, but I would still tread carefully whenever I had to venture outside. This year is when I would remember. It wasn't some significant event or great revelation that pulled the memory from my subconscious. I was just watching the snow falling at night, watching the flakes drift in and out of streetlights. The golden glow emitted by the street lights temporarily shifting the color of the snow. I don't remember it because no one ever talked about it. Even searching it on Google now seems to yield no related results. Eventually, it must have faded from collective memory and been scrubbed off the internet. When I finally remember it, the time came back to me vividly. Many years ago, when we would experience what was called Amber Snow. That winter started normal enough. I was a little younger back then. I can't even recall the actual year this all took place. The snow started to fall, and I went outside to play in it, falling up as much snow as I could and throwing it against the side of our house, trying to see how big I could make the splat of snow. About a day into the snowfall, I remember hearing a siren ringing out. It scared me. I had never heard that siren before, so I didn't know what it was at first until my mother ushered me inside and told me. She led me into the living room where my father was already turning the TV on and switching away from my cartoons to watch the news. I can't remember all of what the meteorologist said. He was quickly spouting off information that I wasn't paying attention to. I was too busy looking out the window, mesmerized by the snow falling outside. It looked unlike any snow I had seen before. There was a noticeable shade of gold to it, like each flake was made of honey. When it first started, there was such a noticeable contrast of the gold snow landing on the pure white layer before it. Since I wasn't listening to the man on the news, I stood up and started to head to the front door driven by curiosity. Before I could even twist the handle, my mother grabbed my hand and pulled me away. She looked at me and, with a stern voice, told me that I wasn't allowed to go outside as long as the snow looked like that. I asked what was going on, but neither of them would give me a straight answer, only insisting that I stay inside. Staring out the window again, I could see a little girl running out into the snow and her father chasing her. I could see the little girl dig her hand into the snow and throw it up above her, letting the pile of it cascade onto her. I scoffed and headed up to my room, suddenly feeling childish for even playing in the snow in the first place. Pulling my chair up to my desk, I watched the dark monitor in front of me spring to life. Pulling fingers over the keyboard, I let my curiosity guide me. I went to our local news website to check on the weather alert. There was a warning, but it only said to stay inside and that the snow that I had seen was hazardous. I couldn't imagine how something like snow could be dangerous enough that it warranted a siren. So, I continued to dig around. It was tough to find anything at first. We were all figuring it out in real time, but soon enough forms started popping up. People all trying to figure out what was going on these forms were where the term Amber Snow came from, and it stuck. Searching for the term would bring up post after post with different theories. Some people thought it was a chemical attack that the government was testing out on its citizens. 
People were calling it fear-mongering, claiming that amber snow was rare, but it wasn't all that unusual. More and more, this notion that the snow was nothing to be afraid of started to spread into every conversation. So, naturally, people started going outside. Videos popped up. People filming themselves walking outside and letting the amber snow land on them. It felt uncomfortable watching those videos, like there was this electric feeling to them that I couldn't shake. There was quite a few of them. They would show the snow touching them, some even rubbing the snow around. There was a collective sigh of relief. Nothing happened for about an hour. That's when the internet exploded. I hadn't been keeping up for a bit, as it seemed there wasn't anything going on. I had even gone down to check on the neighbor, but they weren't outside anymore. My parents were still sitting in the living room like sentries watching the front door. By then, the layer of white that had accumulated earlier in the day had been snuffed out by the amber snow. The sky was starting to get dark, so the street lights came on. The way the light bounced off the snow was pretty seeing the ground shimmer like that, like we were in a city of gold. With a bit of food in tow, I made my way back upstairs and decided to refresh the forums I was on to see if there were any updates. I stared at the screen as it reloaded and was met with a plethora of new videos and images. The tone of messages left on the boards had changed drastically. The conspiracy crafting and debunking had been completely replaced. Instead, there was a litany of warnings and cries for help. People typing in all caps relaying the same message over and over, pleading for anyone who saw them to not go outside. That feeling of static running over my body returned as I scrolled down further to see more videos, more pictures. Pictures were posted of people's skin, all in various stages of decay. It was like frostbite had withered skin to the color of soot. The food I brought up with me becoming increasingly unappetizing as the images contained an assault of graphic content. My body was beginning to tremble before I even pressed on the first video I saw. Someone rushing into their home, I couldn't hear their rapid and labored breath as they sprinted through the house until reaching a faucet. My finger hovered over the mouse watching the water running over his skin, watching the dark patches of his skin shift. It was so smooth, like he was just pulling wrapping off. The water in the sink was diluted by red. I felt my stomach turning when the water washed enough of the skin away to show that the area underneath was also stained black. I paused the video when he reached towards the dark spots under his skin. I hadn't even realized my hand had cupped over my mouth, trying to keep the sensation of throwing up at bay. The videos were hard to ignore, hard to not press play on. The way the snow affected the skin of people it made contact with, there were videos of people rolling around in the snow whose skin had rotted away. Every video had so much screaming in it that it didn't feel like it was a part of reality. It felt fake. Still, I kept watching. I kept reading. I kept thinking about that little girl across the street and her father. Through shaking hands and a twisting stomach, I watched the complete madness of amber snow unfolding. I watched the lives lost. I heard the people calling emergency services. Services that wouldn't show until the snow was clear. Everyone was trapped inside, and those that didn't heed the warning were subject to some of the most abject horror I have ever seen. Not everyone's skin just came off. The snow seemed to affect people in a variety of ways. Some people's skin cracked and fell off in flakes. Other people's limbs would twist around, spilling black liquid from their wounds. The more I remember about that night, 
the more I realize why I forgot in the first place. Some of the most horrific things I have ever seen spawned from that night. So many people just disappeared, and when the snow cleared, everyone just went back to normal. No one talked about it to each other, and the buzz on the internet died out. I'll never get answers about that night, and I'm not entirely sure I'd want them anyway. It was a horrible, horrible night when the amber snow fell. Okay. Well, thank you all for listening. I hope you all enjoy tonight's exclusive story written for the podcast by author Jojo. His stories, both exclusives and not, are always a blast, and uh, his links will be in the description below. I don't know if this will be coming out on Christmas Eve or Christmas Day, but either way, Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. Let's all hope 2021 is a little bit better than 2020. If you'd like to support this podcast, I'd appreciate it if you would check out the Patreon link in the description, or check out the merch store below as well, or really anything else. So without further ado, thank you all for listening, and have a great night. Cheers.